right, this is lecture 12 on matrices and it's on determin determinants and permutations as well. There's a lot to go through. Right, first off, the definition. Right, now, to find a determinant, first of all, the matrix that you're doing it on has to be a square with four like This means it's got no lines of zeros on the bottom, so you can't have a 2 by 3 and change it to a 3 by 3 by putting zeros across the bottom. You can't do that. And we have a couple... Oh, and if you if you ask you to find it, it'll do it as if it's a modulus. So I have it like that, and then you also put those lines around the matrix as well. And we have a few rules. We have the determinant of A B is the determinant of A times the determinant of B. The determinant of R, where R is a scalar, A equals R to the n. Now this will make sense in a minute, just down here a determinant A, and the determinant of A inverse is the determinant of A inverse D. Right, um, and we have this here, which tells us this is A is, and uh, this A uh, prime is known as adjointed, and, bless me, sorry, uh, and you'll find out probably that next lecture, I think. And if you divide that by determinant A, you'll get the identity matrix of N, where N is the, the size of the square. So if it's a 2 by 2, then N is 2. And this is where this comes from. It'll be the size of the matrix, the N there. Right. Permutations. Permutations. He did a bit on this. I don't see the reasoning why he did it. But it's the number of swaps you do when you're doing it. Now, this will make sense later, but I figure I'll get out of the way now. Uh, and it's donated as sine p, and the p is the number of swaps you do, and if it's odd, then the sine p is minus 1, and if it's even, the sine p is 1. Right now, and right, to find the determinant of a 2 by 2 matrix, it's quite simple. I remember as this fish sign, so you do the fish like that. So we have a times d, and go round, and because it's like, I think of it as a line, and the only math symbol that's a line is the subtract sign, so we have a times d minus b times c, and that's how you find it on a 2 by 2 it's pretty simple, and it's kind of related to vectors, you might remember something similar. Right now, uh, I kind of did my own method for a 3 by 3 and anything bigger, he did a very long thing which didn't make much sense to anyone, I don't think, and our seminar tutor told us a different method as well, which I think is better, but this is just my method to start off with. If we were to find the determinant of A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, what we do is we do the fish symbol, and we start here, and we multiply down like that, and when we get to the bottom, we stop. Uh, so we've got multiply down, so we have A, E, I. Next, we move across, we started at A, but now we do B. So we go down as well, so we have B, F, and then we went to go here, but because we've hit the wall, we go through the other side, and it's G. So B, F, G, B, F, G. So you add that as well. Uh, then we move to the C, so we go C times D times H. Uh, that's the way I remember it, and we add all them together. Then we subtract we go backwards the other way, so we go the negative, we go backwards. So we have C, E, G multiplied together, we subtract that, then we subtract B, D, I, and then we subtract A, F, H. And that's the method that I do it, that I just kind of looked at it, that that makes a lot more sense than what he was doing. So we've got our ads. And then we're subtracting these parts. That should kind of make sense. And then I've got a little example of how it works as well. So we want the determinant of this. So we have uh, 2 times 6 times 1, which is 12. Now I'll put the answer up, actually, it'll be a bit easier. 12. Then we have 3 times 7 times 8 is 168. And 4 times 5 times 9 is 180. Then we subtract 4, 6, 8. Subtract. 3, 5, 1, subtract 2, 7, 9, and you'll end up with the answer of 27. Now, this is the method that 
our seminar tutor used. He did this, we got the same matrix, we want the determinant. Now what he did is he chose it like the cross product you do in vectors. So we put a line here and a line here, and then whatever's cross, so we're crossing the A. So you have A times, and we do the determinant of this little shape, what's whatever's left. So we did a determinant of that, which as you remember is EI minus FH, and then we subtract the second one, do that, and then you have DG FI, and then you add the last one, which you have DEGH, and then you'll end up with the same answer if you do it on the previous example of 27. Oop, I'll just pop back. Uh, permutations. I forgot to do them. Right, permutations. Uh, this is the number of swaps. So, the way uh, you can do this is we look at these. Now, we st first of all, we look at the first number. So, we do them in sections. So, we have A, B, C. Now, for starters, what column are these in? They're in column 1, 2, 3. So, there is no swaps. Next one, we have E, F, D. So, we have 2, 3, 1. So we have 2, 3, 1, and the number of swaps from 1, 2, 3 to 2, 3, 1 is 2. So we have 1, 2, 3, uh, 2, 3, 1. If we swap, I probably should have done a diagram for this. Uh, if we swap 2 and 3 and 1 and 2, something like that. But the number of swaps, you can swap 2 at a time. So we can swap 1 and 2 and 2 and 3, and then we swap again, and you'll end up with 2, 3, 1. And the same here, we have I, G, H, I, so we have 3, 1, 2, and it's the number of swaps again from 1, 2, 3, which is what we're starting off with, and that is also 2 again. So in that case, as we said before, in the previous, uh, the sign is 1, because it's even, because we had 2 swaps. Uh, I'll probably do a bit more of that on the next uh, video as well.